Nick DeVries' sacking has brought a lot of controversy to Formula 1, and although it spiced up what seemed to be a boring season, it came at the expense of the 28-year-old Dutchman. Many fans believe that he was treated poorly by Red Bull, the team that ought to do so with its rookie drivers. But now, after the meeting with Wolf, there has been a lot of speculation about De Vries making a revenge move on the Austrian team. With how close these two are, is there any possibility that we'll see De Vries drive as a full-time employee of Mercedes, or maybe even some of their affiliate teams, given how unstable the driver's lineup is in Williams with Logan Sargent underperforming? Nick was labelled as the Wonder Kid driver, who managed to score points in a car that was fairly struggling to finish a race, let alone score points last year in Monza. The Williams of Albon had to be replaced by a driver who had only one hour to prepare himself for the upcoming racing weekend, and indeed he did, finishing P9 and scoring two points, which saw Latifi finish the championship in P21 from a 20-driver lineup. Nonetheless, he was instantly this hot prospect that every team wanted to have for their own. And quite interestingly, he ended up with one of the few teams in which Nick was considered the second choice, Alpha Tauri. Many thought this was a part of a conspiracy theory from Mercedes, as Nick served the role of a reserve driver in the Silver Arrows. But even so, he was unable to prove us wrong with his performance in the first 10 races as a full-time F1 driver. Be that as it may, De Vries is now without an F1 seat. And while many have labelled his F1 career to be over and have crowned him as the driver with one of the shortest F1 careers in the world, that is far from the case for the Dutchman. If we're being honest, De Vries has a lot of chance to make a comeback, mostly because he's 28 years old, has driven F1 cars in the past, and just because the 8004 didn't seem to suit his driving style doesn't mean that other cars won't do the same for him. And interestingly enough, De Vries was seen having a conversation with Toto Wolff just hours after being sacked from the team. But we'll get to their revenge plan later in this video. First, I want to talk about how De Vries was brutally bashed by Marco and why AlphaTauri decided to do what they did, replace him with Ricardo, who now holds one of the most difficult missions on his hands, and bring the Italian squad back to the midfield. According to the Austrian special advisor for Red Bull, the results were just never there for De Vries, and therefore there was no point of them waiting for a couple more races, because from what we can see right now, he failed to gain sympathy from Marco, Horner, or anyone in the Red Bull camp. It didn't help that Sonoda decided to have a breakthrough season in 2023, and I cannot help but add that Nick's arrogance in 2022 has been a bit too much for a driver who has yet to experience a role as a full-time F1 driver. But that's not the point. The point is that AlphaTauri sacked him after just 10 races. And this is definitely not enough for a rookie who has been placed in a bad situation at a bad time. According to Marco, however, Nick was everything but a rookie at the age of 28. As he went on to say, Why wait? We signed Nick because he did a great job at Monza last year. We expected that this year he would at least perform at the level of Yuki Tsunoda, but this did not happen. In fact, he was constantly three tenths slower and we didn't see any progress. He's already 28. He has a lot of experience and knowledge that he gained by driving the cars of different Formula 1 teams as a test driver. In my opinion, Nick cannot be considered a rookie. Well, while Marco might be right about the fact that Nick did have experience with F1 cars, the least favourable scenario happened for Red Bull. De Vries got back with Mercedes. Yes, they're yet to announce that he's in a collaboration with the Silver Arrows yet again, but from what was seen in Monaco, Wolf is very likely to have taken back his protege in Mercedes. And while many are doubting that there's a place for De Vries anywhere on the grid, Wolf and Mercedes-affiliated teams might say otherwise. For example, we see that the contractual situation between Logan Sargent and Williams is currently hanging in the air. And given the fact that it was De Vries who scored points with Williams back in Monza last year, the race that made him famous all of a sudden, I don't see this as a too far-fetched scenario. Furthermore, there's also the possibility of Norris departing for Red Bull, and with the kind of upgrades McLaren has brought in the past couple of races, I strongly see De Vries as a potential candidate to replace Lando Norris. I know what you're thinking. Wolf would likely promote Mick Schumacher due to the extremely hard work he's been doing back at the factory and in the simulator. But Mick has already had his shot with Haas for two seasons, and if we're to judge his performance compared to Nick, I don't think the Dutchman did that bad. Yes, he was slower than Sonoda, but it's not like he was that much slower, and the gap in the last couple of races has only narrowed down. But besides the difference in pure pace, we obviously should not forget the amount of times Nick De Vries has crashed compared to his teammate. Sebastian Vettel has also shown his praise for the young driver, and although he feels like what De Vries had to go through was a rough patch in his career and 10 races are definitely not enough for a driver to prove what cloth he's made from, he doesn't think that his career in Formula 1 is over. When talking about the brutal reality of De Vries, 
Vettel went on to say, maybe those 5-10 races didn't go accordingly to how good they could have been. We don't know why, first of all from the outside, and second, he's still a very good driver. I have to also sympathise with the fact that, you know, it's very harsh on him, and I hope that people don't just see that. He won the F2 Championship, he won the International Championships, so he's well recognised, and I hope that this doesn't put a dent in his confidence. That's why people shouldn't look at only his AlphaTauri career, because people tend to do that, and that's not right. What people need to remember is that De Vries wasn't the first choice for AlphaTauri, and therefore, since day one, he's been under immense pressure to deliver immediate results with the Italian squad. Yes, there's a lot of talk about his bad patch of 10 races and the mistakes he made in Baku and Australia, but if we're going to open this door, I suppose we can talk about Mick's first career in Haas, when the American team had a very dysfunctional car, pretty much non-upgraded from 2020. Nick's latest meeting with Wolf could be a sign of better things for the Dutchman, especially because he's been doing quite a lot of good work for the Silver Arrows in the near past. With this in mind, Wolf might want to expand his hand and reach out to his customer teams, especially Williams, who would rather use a driver that can effectively score points alongside Albon and put the team where it belongs, in the midfield fight. Yes, there will always be talks about how Wolf sent Nick to Red Bull just so that he could learn a thing or two about the team operates and then bring him back with all the intel that's in the Dutchman's head. But as things stand right now, I don't see Nick's F1 career being over. It will take a lot of hard work, and it will definitely be a rougher patch than one could imagine, especially seeing what Mick is currently going through to be considered a legitimate candidate in 2024. But it's not impossible. As of now, the viable options for Nick to keep his mojo are on to drive in the World Endurance Series, ones in which he has participated in the past, and ones in which he's scored points which isn't something that you need to undermine given the current circumstances of his career. After all, you don't get to win an F2 Championship and a Formula E Championship if you're not that good of a driver. And although Nick's arrogance in claiming himself to be better than Norris and Albon during the F2 days have turned around to bite him at the back, who can blame the 28-year-old's confidence? One of the key factors that have downplayed Nick's chances of succeeding with AlphaTauri is not his age, but the hostile environment in which he was placed. From the start of the season, Franz Tost announced that he would retire at the end of the 2023 campaign, and has also said that he doesn't trust his engineers when they tell him that there's an upgrade coming for the car, simply because he feels like the entire season is thrown out of the window. Furthermore, the AT04 has endured a lot of issues, especially in the rear end of it, and this is one of the reasons why AlphaTauri's plan to get back in the midfield thanks to using Ricardo is most likely to fail, as Ricardo himself said that this is something he may not be able to accomplish. Be that as it may, De Vries' career is far from over, and with how he's been contacting Total Wolf right after being sacked from Mercedes, I highly believe that there's a lot more in store for the Dutchman and his future F1 endeavours. But if he's learned anything from the short-lived experience with AlphaTauri, it's that nothing should be taken for granted, and if Mercedes or Wolf manage to give him another chance at F1, then rest assured he's not going to miss on it.